Today's big idea comes from George S. Clayson and his classic book, The Richest Man in Babylon. In a nutshell, the book is a parable in which a wealthy man slowly teaches others how to create, grow, and preserve wealth. Here is our take on the most essential lessons from the book. Number 1. Spend less than you make Sounds obvious, but common sense isn't always so common. Most people spend every bit of what they make. They tell themselves that if they just earned a little more, they would start saving. But this never happens, since once they make more money, they would simply repeat the pattern and once again spend it all. So, if you want to get rich, you must break this pattern and adhere to advice number one. Number two, pay yourself first. Put aside 10% of all profits for saving. See, money saved is money earned. If you start saving 10% of your earnings, you will hardly notice the difference. But the quality of your life will be noticeably better. Number three, use your savings to make more money. Every dollar you earn is an asset. If you spend it wisely, for example, through investments, it has the opportunity to grow and help you increase your fortune. But if you spend it carelessly, for instance, by investing in depreciating assets like cars, branded clothing, or any merchandise, you are not creating wealth for yourself. Instead, you are simply making someone else rich. Advice number three reminds us to make every dollar count by either saving it or spending it wisely. A football player might spend it on football lessons and his diet, or a business person might spend it on funding small businesses that will make him more money. Number four, invest your money wisely. This advice is crucial for your financial health. Why? Because if you invest in ventures that sound too good to be true, they usually are just that. The book illustrates this with the story of the main character who gave all his money to a tailor who promised to bring back rare jewels for a low price. The man did return, but brought back fake jewels. Isn't it evident that the tailor is likely to know clothes better than jewels? If you invest money in areas you do not understand, your money is as good as gone, so make sure you invest wisely. Number five, invest in yourself first and you will earn more. Most people quit learning when they finish school. They forget the importance of continuous learning. If you keep on learning daily, the difference will be massive. So, invest in yourself and you will be amazed by the things you can achieve. Number six, greed clouds your judgment. Which is the most significant factor that makes us lose money? Greed. What leads to greed? The desire to become rich quickly. Greed pushes us to make risks beyond our appetites and makes us believe in tricksters and frauds. So, take it easy and stay true to your values and morals. And be cautious when someone promises you something with absurdly good returns. Things that seem too good to be true are often just that. Number 7. Lucky people create their own luck. Here the author wants to convey that people who use what they learn, rather than keeping it in their heads, also have a strange tendency to be luckier than other people. In reality, of course, this has nothing to do with luck, but everything to do with the fact that these are people who bend the odds in their favor, who create more opportunities and get results through determination and hard work. As the world's best golfer, Gary Player often said, the harder I practice, the luckier I get. And there you have it, the richest man in Babylon, in a nutshell. Today's big idea comes from Robert Kiyosaki and his brilliant and highly motivating book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. The book has the subtitle, What the Rich Teach Their Kids About Money That the Poor and Middle Class Do Not. The book takes its starting point in Robert's personal story of growing up with two dads. His birth father, who was highly educated and hardworking, but nonetheless always poor, and the father of his best friend, his rich dad, who took him under his wing and taught him financial literacy and how to become and remain rich. Here is our take on the highlights from the book. Number one, above all, educate yourself. In life, it's not really how much money you make that counts, but how much you keep and for how many generations you keep it. The educational equivalent of the saying, you are what you eat, is you become what you study and according to Kiyosaki, the biggest obstacle on the path to financial independence and wealth is financial illiteracy. 
It is, therefore, crucial that you develop financial intelligence. Spend time with successful people, read books, attend seminars, and learn how to earn money and, even more important, how to accumulate it once you have it. And remember that in a fast-moving, information-based world, what you know is less important than how quickly you can obtain new information. Master the art of learning and you will be astonished at the number of money-making formulas you can learn about and gain from. Number 2. Stop working for money. Instead, make money work for you. The poor and the middle class almost always work for others in exchange for a predetermined salary. The sad fact is that no matter how proficient you are at your job and how much money you earn every month, you will most likely never obtain financial independence as long as your salary is your only income source. Instead, you will spend your life working, getting paid, paying bills, and spending your earnings. Buying things brings us short-term joy, so to buy more expensive items, we take up higher-paying jobs. And so the cycle of earning, paying, and spending continues. We become part of the rat race, where money runs our lives and controls our emotions. And often, we end up blaming our employer for our economic struggles instead of taking responsibility for our own financial well-being. In contrast, the rich always seem to have enough and don't appear to be working any harder than the rest of us. In Rich Dad Poor Dad, we learn that this is because the rich view and handle money differently from the lower and middle classes. They're not dependent on their profession or monthly salary to get through the week or pay their bills. They're not affected by taxes in the way the middle class is and they understand the do's and don'ts of making and spending money far better. And the secret behind this, you ask? They have stopped working for money and made money work for them. They do this through financial intelligence, by collaborating with legal and tax specialists, and by minding their own businesses. Number three, mind your own business. Your profession is the line of work you have chosen your business is what will make you rich. Most of us work, at our job, to earn income. But often, even if you have an impressive title, your salary won't get you far, and we end up making our employers and their stakeholders rich instead of ourselves. To safeguard and grow your personal wealth, you need to create and maintain your own business on top of your professional career. As an employee, your working efforts generally benefit others before they advantage you. You work for the company. Employees make their business owner or the shareholders rich, not themselves. You work for the government. The government takes a considerable share from your paycheck before you even see it. And if you work harder to earn more, you simultaneously increase the chunk taken by the government. You work for the bank. After taxes, your most considerable expense is usually your mortgage and credit card debt, which again makes the bank richer, not you. The problem here is that most of your money is gone already before you start spending on things that genuinely make you happy. Therefore, to obtain financial independence, you need to learn to make financial decisions that benefit you and your family directly. Here is how Robert Kiyosaki suggests you do this. First and foremost, you must know the difference between an asset and a liability and focus on building your assets while avoiding liabilities. Here is an easy way to picture the difference between the two. An asset puts money in your pocket. A liability takes money out of your pocket. Examples of liabilities are your car, expensive clothes, watches, or other luxury items bought on credit, mortgage, and the likes. On the other hand, an asset is anything that makes us money without taking up the majority of our time, such as stocks, bonds, royalties from intellectual properties, income from online ads, cash-producing real estate, and side businesses. To be wealthy, we need to spend a big chunk of our money on assets as they assure us a steady stream of income 
that we can use to acquire even further cash-producing assets. In conclusion, the rich focus on building assets that keep generating cash, which they subsequently use to buy even more assets, and hence the path to financial freedom has been paved. And there you have it, our key takeaways from Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Today's big idea comes from motivational speaker and life coach Tony Robbins in his best-selling book, Money, Master the Game. The book is, in its essence, a roadmap to becoming financially independent much simpler and quicker than you ever realized possible. A crucial premise is that you don't have to be an expert investor or a financial advisor to master your fiscal plans for the future. Anyone can master money matters and create their dream lifestyle. All you need is some fundamental knowledge and a strong desire. The book has the subtitle, Seven Simple Steps to Financial Freedom. Let's walk you through the highlights of each step. Step one, save steadily. If you genuinely want to become financially independent, it is pivotal to make your money work for you, not vice versa. Saving money is the first step toward financial freedom, since those who start saving and investing early benefit heavily from compounding. What you save today delivers returns for your entire life. Putting away 10 to 15% of your income is recommended. And once this money reaches a critical mass, it will compound and produce returns until you die. If you find it hard to spare this much in your budget, you can start by committing just 3% for savings. But remember to grow the savings rate as your income increases over time. Step two, know the rules. Many people take advantage of an inexperienced or naive investor. So it is crucial that you arm yourself with sound reasoning and common sense before investing. Here are six pitfalls you should avoid. One, fees matter. Over extended periods, even small fees can snatch the majority of your earnings. So make sure to read the fine print before investing. Two, the promise of huge returns. If a financial partner advertises a return of about 6%, it will probably be closer to 3%. Three, putting all your faith and money in investment advisors. Remember that the actual job of these people is to sell you services and earn money for themselves. So use your common sense or turn to a fiduciary instead. Four, not managing your pension plan. Investigate the details of your pension plan and don't be afraid to make changes as appropriate. Five, risking it all. Successful investors don't gamble with their hard earned savings and neither should you. Six, selling yourself short. The biggest obstacle to your financial success is your limiting perceptions and beliefs. Step three, make the game winnable. Ask yourself what you are hoping to achieve by investing in your future. To get where you want to be, you must know the price of your wish. Most dreamers have never figured out the cost of their dreams so they cannot plan for them. And don't just guess or estimate these numbers, but really try to get an accurate price of what your ideal comfortable future will cost you. Step four and five, allocate your assets. The most crucial investment decision you will make is where to put your money. In any case, it is essential that you diversify your portfolio. Tony offers a peek into the portfolio allocation of Ray Dalio, who is possibly the most significant investor in history. Critical factor in Ray's success is the all weather strategy, which builds heavily on portfolio diversification. See, by diversifying your investments through a mix of bonds, stocks, gold, and other commodities, your total investment is protected even during challenging economic environments. Step six, invest like a billionaire. If you want inspiration for arranging your investments, look straight to the people at the top. The world's billionaires have clearly managed to master the art of investment. Many of them are pretty generous with their advice. Here are some general rules for investing like a billionaire. Don't lose. Billionaires are obsessed with making sure they don't lose money. Seek small investments that produce significant returns. Always wait for opportune times to invest. Make informed decisions with limited information. You can't know everything, so be ready to act even if you don't have all the facts. You're never done. The 0.001% are relentless in their pursuit of excellence. Step 7. Do it. Enjoy it. The last step to remember is that you must take action to boost your happiness. 
Success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. So remember to spend your money in a way that makes you happy. And there you have it. Money, Master the Game by Tony Robbins in a nutshell. Today's big idea comes from Benjamin Graham and his helpful and thought-provoking book, The Intelligent Investor. The book is an all-time classic and, in its essence, a guide on how to invest in the stock market while minimizing economic risks. In the book, we learn that investing well over the long term does not require incredible intelligence or profound insight. Instead, it requires two things, a rational framework for decision making and the ability to prevent your emotions and the emotions of others from overriding your common sense and defined plans. With these two things in place combined with patience and discipline, investing successfully is possible for anyone. Here's our take on the essential insights conveyed in the book. Things that matter when investing intelligently. Choice matter. A stock is not just a mere object you trade. It's a piece of ownership in a business. Make sure you understand both the business and the company before investing. Price matters. The more you pay for a stock, the lower your return. Don't fall into the trap of thinking you can buy any time at any price and still make a profit. Market conditions matter. The market has constant mood swings. At times, it's over-optimistic, which makes stocks too expensive. At other times, it's pessimistic, which makes stocks cheap. The key is to buy from pessimists and sell to optimists. A margin of safety matters. Never invest more than you can afford to lose. Investors versus Speculators A crucial point Graham makes is that investors and speculators are different types of shareholders. Investors are independent thinkers that use a dependable system for decision making. They look at the fundamental value of a stock independently of analysis or expert evaluations. They buy when the market is down since this is when stocks are cheap. Speculators, on the other hand, trade on market movements and are swayed by popular opinion. They buy stocks as the prices go up, hoping to sell to someone who will pay even more later. If the price goes down, they quickly sell to capture their gains and cap their losses. In all this, they ignore the fundamental value of what the company is worth. Referring to the book's name, it almost goes without saying that Graham recommends taking the investor approach if you want to act most intelligently when determining your investment strategy. Two types of intelligent investors. Graham goes on and defines two different types of intelligent investors, the defensive and the aggressive. Defensive investors want to avoid spending too much time on investing. They like simplicity and don't love thinking about investments or money. Their goal is to perform on average in line with the market and avoid severe mistakes. Aggressive investors are willing to devote serious time and energy to research stocks and select good ones. They enjoy thinking about money and see smart investing as a competitive game. They want to win. Their goal is to achieve better returns than the passive investor. Both approaches can be intelligent and can perform well. The key is choosing the right type of investment for your temperament and goals, sticking with it over your entire investment timeline, and keeping your emotions well under control. If you prefer the style of the defensive investor, Graham recommends splitting your investments 50-50 between stocks and bonds. This will allow you to bet on the lucrative gains of stocks while remaining protected by the relative safety of bonds. Depending on market conditions, it is okay to shift your balance in favor of stocks or bonds, but never more than a 75-25% ratio. If you instead prefer the path of the aggressive investor, Graham advises you to devote serious time to research, methodically value potential investments, be patient and wait for bargains, and maintain a level-headedness when the market is reactive in either direction. And there you have it, The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham in a nutshell. Today's big idea comes from Napoleon Hill and his best-selling book, Think and Grow Rich. First published in 1937, it remains an instant classic and is widely named the most influential self-help books of all time. It reveals the money-making secrets of hundreds of America's most wealthy people and stresses that by thinking like them, you can become like them. The overall message of the book is that whatever the mind can conceive and believe, man is capable of bringing into reality. There are no limitations except those we set ourselves. Let's review his 13-step program that guides you on the path to wealth and success. Step one, desire. Everything man can create or acquire first begins in the form of a desire. 
you must desire riches so keenly that this desire becomes an obsession. Visualize yourself already in possession of a huge fortune and become determined to have it. All those who have accumulated great fortunes throughout history first did a great amount of desiring and visualizing before actually acquiring their fortunes. Step 2. Faith When faith is blended with the power of thought, the subconscious mind instantly picks up the vibration and transforms it into unlimited intelligence. All thoughts which have been given feeling and then mixed with faith begin immediately to transform themselves into real life achievement. Step 3. Auto-Suggestion Man is the master of his own destiny because he has the power to influence his thoughts. Auto-Suggestion allows individuals to guide their thoughts, feelings, and behavior and is the medium for communication between the conscious and subconscious mind. You can therefore influence your mind positively by visualizing yourself already in possession of the fortune you desire. Step 4. Specialized Knowledge There are two kinds of knowledge. One is general, the other is specialized. General knowledge, no matter how great in quantity or variety, is of little use in the accumulation of wealth. Knowledge needs to be organized and intelligently directed through practical plans of action. Knowledge is power when and only when it is organized into definite plans of action and directed towards a fixed goal. And if you're in need of specialized knowledge in order to reach your goal and you do not have the ability or the inclination to acquire it yourself, simply seek the help of people who possess it already. Step 5. Imagination Your imagination is the workshop in which plans are created and prepared for action. Man can create anything that he can imagine. The only limitation lies in the development and use of his imagination. Step 6. Organized Planning The most intelligent man living cannot succeed in accumulating money, nor in any other undertaking, without practical and workable planning. And remember that if your plans fail, that defeat is not permanent failure. It may simply mean that your plans were not sound. Create new plans. Start over and remember that a quitter never wins, and a winner never quits. Step 7. Decision Procrastination, the opposite of decision, is a common enemy which practically every man must conquer. Analysis of several hundred people who had accumulated fortunes disclosed that successful people had the habit of reaching decisions promptly and changing those decisions slowly, if ever. Step 8. Persistence Willpower and persistence are essential for transforming desires into monetary equivalents. There may be no heroic connotation to the word persistence, but this quality is to the character of man what carbon is to steel. Step 9. Power of the Mastermind You automatically take on the habits and power of the people you associate with. Control this by forming a mastermind group who can assist you to achieve your dreams. Surround yourself with people who can give advice, counsel, and personal cooperation. This form of cooperative alliance has been the basis of nearly every great fortune. Step 10. The Mystery of Sex Transmutation Transmute means to change one form of energy into another. Sex transmutation means switching the mind from thoughts of physical expression to thoughts of another nature. Sex desire is the strongest of all human desires. Therefore, it can be the strongest of all motivational forces. When harnessed, this motivating force unleashes powerful, creative forces, keenness of imagination, courage, willpower, persistence, and creative ability. Steps 11 to 13, the subconscious mind, the brain, and the sixth sense. Every human brain is capable of picking up vibrations of thought sent out by other brains. The subconscious mind consists of a field of consciousness in which these vibrations are classified and recorded. The sixth sense is the creative part of the mind and generates hunches and inspiration. And there you have it, 13 steps to think and grow rich. We hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to give it a like. Take care and see you soon.